I want to keep this civil, and I want to keep it diplomatic. I will fight anybody <laughs> who tries to tell me that this battle pass is some sort of bank for your brother. I will fight anyone who's telling me this battle pass is worth any amount of money. I don't know how many months it's been since this game been out, but it's been a lot of mixed, mixed reviews or mixed opinions. But not, not really. It hasn't really been mixed. Like it's been a, it's been an overwhelmingly <laughs> negative of reviews, actually. Yeah, I think the consensus is pretty. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty solid. So before before we before we jump into this Overwatch thing, I wanted to talk. Well, I mean, obviously Overwatch, but I wanted to uh, you know, say let the people know, you know, our credentials on both games and our experiences, you know. With you know, with both of those games, you being a, a well-seasoned veteran in both games, and uh, me, I've never played. Well, I played the first like probably twice, once or twice, and currently play Overwatch Two. I got like twenty-five or so hours in it, so you know, I'm I'm playing Overwatch Two as a newcomer, and you have a seasoned veteran here. Uh, to give his experiences with the game based on his previous uh, experience with Overwatch 1. So I'll let you go ahead and take the floor and, you know, let the people know. Just wanted to let you know, man, the professional league uh, Overwatch player here. Um, <laughs> straight out of Houston, Texas, uh, worldwide, baby. You know, you, you know how it is. Uh, the top top 1%, baby. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been in the joint since... Uh, had it been since 2017. So I think it came out in 2016. Um, if I wanted to pin a date down for just the real pedantic folks, whatever the date was that they had the free weekend when Sombra first got released was when I first got on. And I was instantly hooked. Like, I love the gameplay loop. Love just, like, the visceral, not, not visceral, but just, like, real satisfact, uh, satisfactory feel of it. Like, you know, it was, it was real cool. And I was real hard for it. And you can attest to this. Uh, when I first started out, I was real hard for it, like nonstop for like a year or two. So, you know, like yeah. I, 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 I was, I was even, even under the, cause I know well, I'm in the gaming, like new. So I, of course, Overwatch was one of the biggest games ever. And it won and like one of the only games to win, like game of the year. Was it 2016 or 2017? Uh, like multiplayer game to win game of the year. So this game was highly super duper loved yeah and i and everybody loved overwatch one but they still cooked it to oblivion like i heard people was like man these loot boxes they keep trying to steal our money this is this and that but yeah, over it, it, but it, overall people loved overwatch and people still do love overwatch yeah and that's that's been kind of the thing with it now was that was the like that's been a pattern since the very beginning right um the gameplay is solid but everything else is very anti-consumer like that's not no, it's, it's, it's nothing new <laughs> Um, any criticisms that people have been levying at it, they've been levying at it for years. So it's nothing new. But uh yeah, so I mean I was I was I was in that thing. I was I was the very same way, but it was it was easy, it was easy to put all of that aside at the time. Um loot boxes were very iffy. Like I I hated the fact that, you know, it was it was it, as far as I was concerned, it was essentially gambling. Um hated that, but it was easy to put that out of my mind because the gameplay was still cool. It's like whether or not you know, it was gambling. Like you, if, like every single time you use a loot box, you still got something. So it was like, okay, whatever. Like it's a half measure, but whatever. Gameplay still fine. I still love playing it. It being anti-consumer isn't going to stop me from playing. It. Like, all right, cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, just at like it, not really anything substantial. But as time went on, like I, I start like you, you start getting more and more critical of stuff that you are into I guess um, still talking about like oh, still touching on Overwatch 1 where it's just like of course like that's that's what's going to happen it's like you, you're playing it for longer you're, you're becoming more seasoned some of the stuff that was like real good about it isn't that new anymore so you start becoming a bit more critical of it so over time it's not necessarily a bad thing it's just the, it's just the way things happen um, but yeah I was able to 
I, I definitely saw the difference between the differences between Overwatch One and Overwatch Two when it came. Like, All right. Pretty so hard. what? So how how do you feel playing um, Overwatch Two as in like as from coming from Overwatch One? How do you feel playing Overwatch Two? In a gameplay sense? Yeah, just just the game. Like how you feel about it? In a gameplay sense. I, and I hope the consensus is clear on this. In a gameplay sense, it plays different, better, and a lot better in a lot more ways than it is worse. Mm-hmm. Um, like the uh, like a lot of the gameplay balanced everything they did. Like they like they 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 did well. Um, I remember talking up like how they uh, reduced it from six v six to five v five. Like I remember like like I remember talking about that. Like that it, it makes the game seem more focused, and you can definitely tell during the games themselves like the matches are much more fast paced they're a lot less uh bullet spongy um it, it was a very inspired decision to reduce like uh the gameplay modes from like two tanks to one so it meant that you weren't just sitting there like just wailing on shields and uh like high health tanks all day that like, you didn't have the thing where it's like oh you have like a, a, a sigma and an orissa both hiding behind shields and they got a bastion back there with them so you basically getting eaten up alive without like not making any progress like now it feels much more focused um now it feels much more fast paced um and that definitely changes the gameplay for the better and even beyond that just a lot of the uh like the character changes were like pretty good like i i, I like the way that each of the different roles play differently now they still they eat now they each have different perks to t- uh, attached to them like how um if you're playing an assault like if you're playing an assault character they get better at their job as they go along they get better at their job the better that you do it's like you know they start getting uh you uh, playing assault character you're getting more kills you start like uh, moving it back a bit faster you have your tanks who are like much like much more hard to like knock back which should have always been the case um yeah but- i and i saw that they took uh like a page out of apex but i remember we were talking last night about how um like how wraith like those smaller characters wraith lifeline uh like those smaller hitbox characters they're a damage type character but they come attached with like a percentage to where they take more damage because their the hitbox is so small and it's the opposite with the larger characters larger characters they have something called fortified to where like their knockback isn't as big they don't get like if you get hit by like a clip they tend to slow down like if they're running with the bigger character they don't slow down like they can still uh move and do all that stuff so yeah. that's that's something good that they uh that i noticed that they added too it's like the health the health differences were always inherent to overwatch because uh, the different classes had different levels of health mm-hmm. you know, um like it, it always seemed weird to me how it was done but i mean it's like it, it it is the way it is like tanks they always have more health like they're in the 400s or higher um right but that up. but that passive thing um i think they have like um just a passive ability in general yeah like and so th- th- those are the, those are the things i'm talking about they're passives yeah. and that didn't always used to be the case that right always even to me at the time it was weird i think the one character who had that was reinhardt um where it was like his like passive was like he was very much, like he was much harder to knock back as far as i was concerned that should have been the case for all the tanks and now it is right good exactly yeah so like the different ways they play it's cool and then like each of the individual like character changes and everything like the way that they buff some of the characters a, 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 a couple of them are a bit more broken now but I yeah i that. yeah they had the a bunch i wrote down well it's essentially four major things that changed uh, in Overwatch 2, they said it was a balance changes to some of the heroes like Orisa. They said she like a god now. Um, Even they got the three three new characters: um, yep. Sojourn, Junk, Junker Queen, Kiriko. Uh, obviously, they went from six to five, like you mentioned. And then the game mode, they got push the um, little robot game mode. Yeah. And they Which had I- overall I- UI. They had a UI overhaul and uh, they updated yeah. the store so th- those are really the only things that were different yeah and that i mean that that kind of ties into what i'm iffy about in so far as it because while those were all good changes the, I've, I've seen it as a common consensus and i absolutely agree with it 
It's like those were good changes, but those were not substantial enough changes to justify this being a second game. And it's like I I, I agree with that. Like th- those are patch changes. Those are qual- those are quality of life changes. Right, right, right. Uh, and we're gonna get to we're gonna get to that. So yeah. go and talk to the next one. Well, me, I'll talk about my experiences. The game is fun. Like I'm a newcomer. It's fun. You know what I'm saying? Get to be all these different types of uh characters. It's it's enjoyable. And being that, you know, this is a sequel, I'm playing the sequel of a game. I knew that there are gonna be a huge learning curve and a bunch of the people that came from the first going to the second, they already know like the basically the meta or not necessarily the meta, but just the the inner and outer workings of the game. They knew that, and I had to learn all that on the fly, which, I mean, it's not bad. I'm still having fun with the game, uh, regardless. And, I mean, earning the characters, because if you don't have Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2, you have to earn the characters by playing, I think, it's like 150 games uh, to get everyone. And then the newest character, uh, Kiriko, she's unlocked on level 55 of the new a battle pass that they implemented and i mean the the we'll talk about like the battle pass and like the leveling system how that all that stuff is going on but i mean as far i understand uh why they want you to play so many games to unlock all these characters but i also have like a counter for that too because yeah they want they're like yeah i don't want you to play all these characters or have access to all these characters because you know you get in a game and you don't know how to use it Overwatch 2 has a training lab. They have um, AI you can go up against. So I don't know why they just didn't give you all the characters, like minus the three new ones. If they did want you to like purchase them, they couldn't have given you those. They could have gave you all the old characters and be like, look, if they, because they, well, let me finish this. Because they want you to kind of get used to it. Could have gave you all of them. Look, train it in the little lab or whatever, because this is a competitive like you have to know the characters in order like to fight them like you can't you can't just get in the game and not know like characters abilities like you have to be able to fight with them and know them and all that stuff and that and the ai part it really helps out so i don't know why they just didn't i don't know why they just didn't give you all of them because you can go in the lab and train as everyone but when it comes down to the game like let's say you're playing payload and then I know it happens a lot like you're maining a character the entire game and then you get to like that final push hey maybe i have to switch over to a a fair or a bastion because i gotta you know i gotta i gotta change it up uh, throw the enemy off and you know their and their um and their abilities may help you in that last little push if you just started you can't do that like you just (laughs) you just gotta thug it out with with whoever you got and, and I don't know if you want to touch on that now, but uh, just like even that, I think it. I think the reasoning for that is more insidious than oh, we just like because that's what I thought uh, at the beginning. It's like oh, they, you know, it, it's learning curve. They just kind of want to ease people into that. I don't think that anymore. See, I thought I I know that that's uh, one of the reasons why, but I, like even like as like a potential reason, I don't think that anymore. Oh yeah, but but that but that tie to the reason why you don't think that I think that ties in to how the um how the battle pass works and how it unlocks everything once you purchase it. Right. Uh, that yeah, but um yeah, that's pretty much my just basic experience with the game, and that's you know that's how I feel coming in playing it. So yeah, like I I am glad that you like from what you have played. I am glad that you enjoy it. No it, no, it's a fun it's a fun game like. Yeah. Like if a game is fun, it's fun. Like people would trash like Fortnite and like, man, this game is wag. This is not. Like, look, the game was fun. I mean, now I don't know what I don't know what they're doing now. That I haven't played in a long time, but when the when the game when the game was at its peak, it was fun. Like Overwatch, I couldn't really get into it. The, I don't know why the first one it doesn't register with me. I, I did just. It's because it costs money. It costs money. <laughs> you think um, so? <laughs> Like that, that joint stayed sixty bucks for a minute. Um, I mean, but like e- but even still, because I really don't, I don't like getting into games that are already like solidified. Like if I start playing Rainbow Six Siege today, I get, I get man, I would get dusted. 
Yeah, you yeah, know? I would get cooked. I will say though, as far as uh, balance and leveling are concerned, as far as like matchmaking is concerned, Overwatch was really good in that regard with what they had implemented. Right. Where it's like if it it it, it kind of isn't that way with quick play because I mean you 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 are essentially put in there with just random. Like they don't care about your skill level. You are put in there with just random. Yeah. However, once you like transition over to like comp and once they as, like asserted your level and everything like that it, w- it was it was a pretty decent matchmaking system where it's like you know they only put you in games for people who are at your level <laughs> um like skill wise yeah and it a lot of it, it, it's still a high still like a, a high ceiling like a, a high skill curve um but it, it, it was it wasn't it wasn't bad yeah, cause I played I played Apex for thirteen seasons. Like I played since that game dropped. Been playing for thirteen seasons. I think now they're on sixteen or fifteen, and they had a lot of the you know the stream the streamers get a get a voice in this. The YouTubers get a voice in this about skill based matchmaking, and they're like, man, I don't want it to be, you know, I'm so skilled. I don't know. I don't want it to be sweaty every time I get into a match. Cause I don't. Cause skill based skill based matchmaking that's in with the unranked right is skill based. No. Um, or uh, the uh, or just competitive. Competitive, yeah. See the problem with the problem with um uh Apex, I think the just a regular was uh skill based. That explains why their weight times are so low. Yeah, well. yeah. The the regular was skill based, and the um, and ranked was just you know just your rank, whatever rank you were. They'll toss you in with the same people as the rank. But yeah, skill based matchmaking, because they didn't want people who were like super super good, and there were people that were uh bad at the game. But you know, once you, like you like me, you've been playing for twelve seasons, the people you like interact with, they're also good. So they were like, man, I just want to get on here and. And relax. I really don't want to like sweat every match, but I mean that's an, that's another story. That's another. That's another. That wasn't the case with ranked with. Uh, that, that was the case with ranked with Overwatch, but not the case with a uh, quick play. Like quick play was always always random. So you could very much get in there. And we we I remember playing this game with Jay. Like it, it happened so many times. You could very well get into like uh just a easy quick play match and have some. Pro Gendry or Pro <laughs> Hanzo or somebody, the Pro Soldier, on your team or on the other team, just 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 sweat going hard. Yeah. To the point of, hey man, listen, I I just want to relax. All right, and the next thing I want to talk about was the promises that they made. So before Overwatch Two came out, I think it was in development for like three years, and they made some promises, and the promises it ain't matching with what with what came out. So I, I want to I want to touch on that a little bit because I did hear about the um, PVE portion of the game. Um, like they had to create new abilities for. Like I heard someone say it was like thirty abilities per um, hero. Yeah, or something should... like that. And I'm like, bro, I don't know who <laughs> they think making this game, but. 30 abilities per character is is kind of nonsensical it's kind of nonsensical if that is the the challenge that they set for themselves then fine you know go all out go at it that's that's what you want that's what you see as a legacy for the pve in this game it's like you know it's the kind of thing where it's like okay sure cool i can get excited about something like that if it actually does pan out that way and i remember seeing the promos and everything it was cool to see stuff like that. It was cool to see like the characters and everything evolving over the course mm-hmm. of a game or the course of a campaign or something like that. It, it was cool to see that. So if that pans out, then sure, by all means, go at it. But as it stands, I have no reason. Yeah, as to that, the, any and and as we can see, it ain't in the game. They say it's delayed until next year. Uh huh. And it's like, oh, like I I, I look at it right now in a bit of an incredulous way where it's just like what what why did you put this out like why why did you put out what you have right now like yeah sure it's free to play but it's it 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 something that could have been like anything that you inputted in the, what you put out now could have been a patch in the original game 
and so that and that is another point i want to get to like I, I like i said i play like very very little of the first game but i've also seen i've seen plenty of overwatch uh gameplay i've seen plenty of pre-alpha overwatch 2 gameplay and i'm playing overwatch 2 right now and this it don't like from a person who's just playing it overwatch 2 it does not look different at, like if you don't if you if you don't know the if you don't know the guts of the game like the animations look the same the the characters i mean even like when because they do give you like I, I guess a free skin like they give you the overwatch one and they didn't even update the textures on overwatch one <laughs> they just gave you they just they just gave you the same they just gave you the same like character mode. They didn't even update like the the textures on it. They were like, yeah, just they just slap copy paste that code in the game, and that's, then and, and gave me the Overwatch two um, skin. <laughs> that's that's the thing where it's like it's it, it it it's even beyond just oh copy pasting the code. It's like this isn't different. This is not different code than the first game. It's like you this is the first game with a new uh, like a new coat of paint on it because like i'm looking at this and i'm like you, you you guys didn't work on anything as far as this is concerned like, like all, all you did was implement these changes which could have been done with you know a few months worth uh, like a few months worth of work of a patch because like, that, that's what anything. overwatch that's exactly what it looks like that like, i can say it looks like that i don't know how it feels to you because I, I didn't play the first one enough to like to get a good feel of if it's different but it looks exactly the same and it looks like it plays the same it plays exactly the same the only substantial differences <clears throat> there's no difference in character feel the only substantial differences are like in the actual differences they make to some the, those balances like little balance yeah. changes yeah 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 i know what you're it, talking about other than that it is like not even feels the same it is literally overwatch one right so it's like what what accounts for Overwatch Two is the balances you made, some updated textures, and it's like mm -hmm. that's, that's. I mean. Oh, and uh, I think they got six new maps. Six maps. That was another thing that that was. Even new. that isn't something but, that I, like like they they have the new game mode and everything like that. But even that isn't something that I can applaud them for because they took out so much. Exactly, and I would ask I would ask anybody who like feels like the game like is deserving of uh is undeserving of the criticism i like would you pay 69.99 for overwatch 2 i would ask i would ask any anybody who feels like oh you know uh, y'all too hard on them like man this game gave us a lot i would ask would you pay 70 for it would you pay 70 i would guarantee you, would guarantee you that their response would be like in the moment where it's just like well, no, I wouldn't pay seventy dollars for this, but they didn't charge seventy bucks for it. It's like okay, and that I mean, and that was and that was another that was one of the uh, one of my little rapid fire questions. But yeah, but yeah, we gonna talk about that the the free. Well, we'll just transition from that. How do you feel about um, free to play games, and do you think it hurt or helped Overwatch? And I want your opinion on both the like as a game and as a business, because I know as a business. It definitely helped because you know obviously you get access to everyone everyone gets the game in hands but how do you feel how do you feel about free-to-play games in general and and more specifically how do you feel about it be it, how do you feel about overwatch 2 being a free-to-play game like i can't speak on it from a business standpoint because i'm sure there was I, I i know for a fact there was some reason that they did this it's like it, oh it no no to free to play free to play um games like they're, they're when you did when you design it to be a free to play and to be a a live service game that's that's kind of like they're trying to catch lightning like fortnite did like fortnite was free to play so like, like, like i know it's more profitable i know and why. yeah you get you definitely get way more money but uh the 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 thing with that is and it it, it irritates me to say so and i, I I've, I've seen it's I, I, more than zero people use this as some sort of justification the thing with that is is fortnite started out in the way that it did it started out <laughs> right and that was, that was gonna be another point i was gonna make that's exactly right there there was nothing really to compare that to 
So if I wanted to be mad about the free to play nature, like all the things that came, like came with like the free to play nature of Fortnite, I was like, well, but I would look at that and go, what, what, what would I compare that to? Like, there's no previous iteration of this. This might have been the way that the game was actually intended. But I know for a fact that that's right because that's because that's how they get their money. Same thing with Apex. Apex was free was free to play. It's like I know for a fact that's not the case with Overwatch because I spent money on Overwatch One, and this is Overwatch One with a couple of bits added on. So it, like it, it it is irritating in that aspect where it's like you can't tell me that this is adding on to the bang for my buck based off of what I play because I can't go back and play Overwatch One. This is all I have now. So you can't say that this adds on to the bang for my buck from that game. So it's like what's Blizzard's justification for making this go like free to play as far as I'm concerned? Yeah, I think I think definitely they were going in thinking like yeah we're definitely gonna get because our game was huge one of the biggest games ever so we're definitely gonna get everyone who played overwatch one they're coming to overwatch two. Oh, and, and then obviously because if you're let's say like a streamer or whatever you're playing overwatch one those servers are gone <laughs> so you have to so you have you have to play overwatch two so you jumping on overwatch you jumping on that game you know you're gonna get that audience like the your core your core and then you're gonna get you know the people on the outside you know it's free to play um like me and you that was one of your favorite games probably still is one of your favorite games and i'm like man it's free to play yeah heck yeah i'll jump on and plus now i have somebody to play with and that was another reason why i didn't play it in the beginning because it's like since it's so team oriented solo queuing up that ain't that ain't the wave that ain't, <laughs> that ain't that ain't the wave bro i did it for an embarrassingly long time and i can tell you like for a fact ain't no like ain't no way like i i when back in overwatch one was still around there was no way i was going back to that if i wasn't playing with jay it was like i i just solo queuing is not worth it anymore it's like i ain't putting myself to that headache but, yeah, I mean, yeah it, was like, it, 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 it had those changes and it was cool and now it's much more accessible and that's fine but it's still the kind of thing where it's like hey blizzard <laughs> i can't go back and play overwatch one i can't go back and play the games that i actually paid money for this is functionally the same game so are you saying that i wasted my money because i could have gotten this for free it's like what 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 what, what do you what do you amount the kind like the money that I put into the first game, like what do you mount that to? And it is, it is a little bit frustrating in that aspect that there is like there is functionally nothing that has changed about the game in regards to Overwatch One to merit anything. Like that's why so many people who had Overwatch One are mad at at this patch level, uh, these patch level changes. Yeah. Like nothing changed about this. This isn't Overwatch Two. This is Overwatch One, the same game that we played back uh, that we played back then. But we paid for that. It's like now you're telling us that we don't like nobody has to pay for that, but we can't go back and play the thing that we did pay for. Yeah, that that's kind of that's. I understand how it's frustrating as a, as, especially a dedicated fan. <laughs> that, that's pretty. That's pretty frustrating. Just like a consumer of product, where it's like. It's like, hey, like you, you are telling me that the base experience of this game, the core experience of this game, is worth nothing. Like you're telling me that, you, uh, like I, I don't need to be charged a goddamn thing for the base experience of this game, but you did charge me, and this is the same game. So I look at it a little bit, you know, incredulous, like just a little bit, and I go, well, Blizzard, are you going to give me my fucking like fifty bucks back over the course of the? Two, uh, get, uh, the two uh, versions of this game that I played, because this is the same game, and now you're giving to me, you're giving it to me and everybody else for free. So what the hell did I? Yeah, and it's like you really don't get. I mean, as a, it's like you kind of get a consolation prize. It's like, yeah, we'll let you keep your old characters and all your skins. You know, you're welcome. <laughs> you can keep all your skins you got from Overwatch One. You know, exactly and it's like, but thing. what? But what? Like as a as a person coming back, you know, you, how long is this? I mean, the game's been out for a while, but for a person who's been supporting the game until 2022, and it's like, bro, like what? But what what do what do you what do your supporters get? 
even in the more than in that, a like, in a free to play game. The aggravating part about that is that you like you as a person, like if you did spend money on the first game, it's now gone, and what you have now is worth less than what the first game was. Because the first game came with all the bells and whistles, like it came with like the loot boxes and everything like that, and that was aggravating, but it was still a chance to get all of the things that the game provides. You don't have that anymore. Yeah, I saw a guy was talking about that in Overwatch 1, y'all got daily loot crates. Like, y'all get a box every day if you played. But even then, like, the fact that you could get loot boxes at all. No, no, that's what, I, that's what I mean. So, I'm saying, so essentially, no matter how small it is, how, how small the percentage is, you had a chance to get a skin every day. Right. Yeah. And it, like, you, you had the chance to get the things that were actually in the game. Right. It's like now you can't do that without paying money. So now skins that I could have gotten in the first game, items that I could have gotten in the first game just by playing the game that I paid for, I now have to repay for. And that's where I want to transition over to the battle pass. I want to see what do you think about this uh favorite sub this here um the Overwatch 2 battle pass and then um we're gonna compare the contents because I know a lot of people say, "Man, you you get you get your bang for your buck." I want to see if if uh is that really true? Do you think that that's true that, uh, compared to this uh All right. compared to these other ba the battle pass uh formula that's been created in the gaming industry? Do you think this stacks up? No. physically fight you in the ring because i like, i think it's it's like um because apex was guilty of this too they started doing uh like voice lines and and um like they call them hollows like you would throw them out and a little holographic image would pop up it's basically a spray that you could put anywhere mm -hmm. and like you know, when we got on EA, it was like, bro, we don't like I don't want to unlock like it was I think it was called like a rare, a rare package or a rare uh, loot tick. That's what they call them. I don't want to open up a loot, a purple that was like uh, it was like blue. It was gray, blue, purple and gold. And then if you got like an heirloom one that was like red. Like, so you basically got like one of the characters and heirloom was like when both of their guns are like in their holsters they would hold like a, a melee weapon essentially instead of just being freehand and, like they do like cool animations with it or whatever so you would get those five options if you got a purple one you could get a purple freaking um a uh, voice line i'm like no 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 that's not what you finna do you're not finna give us a rare voice line and then you're it's not, you're not about to tell me that this is this sort of value like no <laughs> yeah like nah bro if, if like a, a purple or higher should at least have a skin at least because you have a freaking a bajillion characters and i and i would say that you know apex they do make really good uh skins or whatever but nah man nah y'all y'all not y'all can't get away with that and i saw yeah. overwatch had that too like bat like icons like player icons nah bro as far as I nah decide, bro the worst one as far as the new battle pass like they've got a lot of gall but the the worst one is like like vo there are voice like, you can't get new voice lines if you don't have the battle pass like voice lines were like like they were the grade thing, like the, the great items that you got in loot boxes in the last game like they were items that you didn't give a crap. Like, like yeah, because like, especially if you're not playing with that character, you'll never you'll never use it. Which you could say about anything, but even with characters that you were playing with, like I I I, I don't use voice lines. Right, right, right. I don't imagine anybody actually does. Like they're just little funny. And aren't they? Aren't they only? And you can use them anytime, right? Or they're just in the uh, pregame. Yeah, but it's like they're they're not they're not integral to the game at all. Which like whatever, fine. They're just they're 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 loot box filler. Like that's what they are. Like, right. There be some common thing in loot box, so they add voice lines. 
like the fact that they have the goal now to like hide every single one of those behind a battle pass a premium battle pass that you have to pay for shows how like shows just how much they give a crap about like value like, yeah. y'all, 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 y'all don't look at the, the the worst possible thing that you could get in any of the old loot boxes y'all don't look at that and go oh hey maybe people wouldn't actually care to pay for this it's like no man. <laughs> like y'all, y'all looked at that and it's like no that's that's hidden behind a premium like we're, we're nickel and diming everything sir even the crap you don't care about we're nickel and diming it all yeah that that stuff that stuff it was uh because i was going because well what i'm glad is that you can actually you know go through the the battle pass and see like okay uh is this worth having now the skin on level 100 the even though i don't i don't really play genji like that like the skin is cool and you can you know make tweaks to it which i wish they did for um for uh more uh games like gave you like a if you got like a legendary skin because fortnite was really good at doing that like if you got a legendary skin it had like armor pieces you could like take off and like it showed you basically got like x amount of skins in that one skin and the same thing with genji i'm like man this genji thing looks super good but it's basically it's basically like i'm paying ten dollars to get the genji skin that i have to grind for like crazy like not just $10 and it's not guaranteed yeah to like you're paying ten dollars to have the privilege to play for hours <laughs> on end. <laughs> and let and this let in this leveling system while we're in this battle pass uh thing like to get because i think the amount of how many coins they give you like they have weekly they have weekly challenges i want to talk about these challenges you get, uh, you get 30 coins a week week i think no you get you get sick you get the option for 60 a week you get 30 is because it's three like tiers that you can do it's 30 uh 20 and then you get 10 on like the last uh oh that's what it was was. yeah it's like 30 20 and 10 and um and that's if you do all the challenges all the challenges and this is and this is the thing about like because apex has really good challenges like like they get you like to play with another character but bro Overwatch 2's challenges, like being that this game is like is really tied and focused on like supporting each other. Yes. Going yes. going out of your way to basically throw a match <laughs> to to do a challenge, that kind of defeats the purpose of like the core of the game. Like this it, is very asymmetrical gameplay. It's like like you you are playing a character because you ha- you're used to that character's kit like y'all don't all start off on the same page it's not it's like uh apex like it had its thing where it's like each character had like their own special abilities and everything like that but as far as the core gameplay was concerned like you all start you all started off on the same page everybody had the ability to get the same guns everybody had the ability to get the same right it's, it's the only thing that made you special was like your pat like just the the like the character's abilities that was really it but in terms of like in terms of like the actual gunplay it was it was straightforward like everyone had the opportunity to get the same like you said the same weapons it was just it was just my it was just minor uh changes because you could run you could play a game with all um with no support uh on apex you don't need a support character you don't need a like a bigger shield type character y'all could all be uh, attack type characters if you had character uh, base challenges on Apex, you weren't put at any, any sort of disadvantage for choosing anybody, like to any like any extent. Like if you played Wraith on a regular basis, you weren't put at a disadvantage for having to do challenges for Octane. It's like because the core gameplay was still the same. Like all that really differed was like their special abilities and stuff like that. It's like you know that's cool. It's it's much less of an investment, but it's a much bigger investment for something like Overwatch because you can't go. From being consistently playing a tank like Reinhardt to going and playing somebody like yeah, Hanzo, playing D- like yeah, D- playing DPS, yeah, playing DPS or something like that. Yeah, that's not. And not not yeah, only that where the challenge is like so. Not only are they they pull you out of the game, but it's not worth it. No, it's, it's not. not worth to throw the whole game just to complete a challenge that's going to give me thirty coins and I need nineteen hundred. 
to get a skin I want. <laughs> yes. yes. No, that's, that's not worth it, bro. That's the worst aspect of that because it's like if you actually want to grind for something like that on a consistent basis, you have to be a complete asshole and play against. You have to play against your team and against your good judgment if you have any. Right. <laughs> Like you have to play against your skill in a lot of cases because a lot of these are character based <clears throat> challenges. It's like, oh, you want to do challenges for Sojourn, but you've only ever played, I don't know, Lucio. It's like if you don't know anything about DPS and all you've known is support, then you're putting your team in that game at a disadvantage and you're going to have to do that on a consistent mm -hmm. basis. And especially, imagine if you have to play a support and you've never played support. Mm -hmm. you, you fried your whole team. You are screwing the team up now. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I want to transition from that to the actual cosmetics that you quote unquote earn. Because I was I was going through some um, what they call them. Oh wait, wait, what happened? No, <laughs> my camera closed. It's closed. Okay, just let me know. Things to say about that. Okay, but well, she said the piece is gonna be done. But I could just pause the recording and go run and get the pizza and then come back. It's right down okay. the street. But um But yeah, I was going through the, the cosmetics, man. And I'm like, bro, these these skins, like granted, some of them are like cool looking, like really, really cool looking. Like the like the theme ones, like the Halloween, the beach skins I saw. I'm like, bro, these look pretty cool, especially like for a character like let's say reaper who's like covered up and you don't really have a and like soldier who like so serious like you see this dude running around in flip-flops i'm like bro that's pretty cool that's funny yeah. But, yeah. but most of these skins are duty that they, they are so bad my biggest and problem it's not worth it my biggest problem with that is like good or bad like that's 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 you you had the ability to get it good or bad in it, the first game, and that, and, exactly, and that, and that's my my point. I think you're leading to. Like, it's, it's like if if you just felt the need to do absolutely nothing at all, what what what? Why are you trying to nickel and dime people for this crap now? It's like you 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 could you could justify not putting that kind of like effort in if all this was available for a free to play game. But no, you're charging for all this crap like not nah, like those that uh, it, 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 it whether or not it's whether or not they're good they're inherently less value than they were right which like uh, even more because like because because the battle pass and grinding to get the actual coins to purchase the skins is so difficult it's not even worth it to even purchase like the lesser the lesser skins that you probably so I think all of them you can't pay for right huh? all all the skins you can't pay you can't pay for some of them you have to get right yeah like yeah some of them you can only get your coins um but you can buy more coins <laughs> um and because because I saw because I saw some skins that were like uh worth like um two thousand nineteen hundred something like that but. There are some skins outside they didn't have a price on it. Or that is that because like it was oh, cheaper? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Or what they're, a... they're uh Oh, that's another thing. Oh wow. And th this was actually a big problem back in uh old Overwatch as well, but it's just gotten even bigger now that it's more nickel and dime. A lot of the skins were seasonal it's like seasonal exclusives. So it's mm -hmm. like if you did not get a Christmas skin during the Christmas season, that Christmas skin was locked for the rest of the year. But you certainly could look at it. Like you go to like the hero uh like the right like, and look at the skins like, right yeah but you sure as heck couldn't get it oh wait wait um, wait so the ones that are that are there but they don't have a price like so you can't buy them you cannot buy them no <laughs> you know you know how many skins that is i was looking at i was looking at it uh yesterday last night bro it's Actually, like I don't, I, don't, I don't know what it is now it very well could be oh they'll allow you to buy them i don't know because um, i don't like, can I open up Overwatch real quick? Because I can't. Either way, it's very anti-consumer. If they don't let you buy it, then that's a skin that you're going to have to wait until like next year to get, and you're just going to sit there and look at it, and that'll just give you the chance to buy it. If they do let you buy it, that doesn't make it like that doesn't make it any better. 
Because, <laughs> like, yeah, you're still charging, like, buku dollars for this skin. Yeah, that's, that's pretty bunk. That's pretty lame. Like, it's bunk either way, but, it, like, it, it was bad in Overwatch 1, and that's the thing I keep coming back to. Like, it was bad in Overwatch 1. It's worse now because y'all y'all aren't even trying to hide the fact that you're just being greedy on this now. All right, so I mean, pretty much covered everything. So, in conclusion, what is your final op- final opinion on Overwatch Two? I agree with the the overwhelming general consensus. Um, I know that I know that there are, like I said, a non-zero amount of people who seem to think that there's some justification behind this. I just I do not see it at all like there's no justification as far as I'm concerned for the way that this has turned out the game is still good it's better and a like to play in a lot of ways but it is much worse to own and that's the thing those things don't equate like they that, don't cancel each other that's a very that's a very good phrase <laughs> that's a very good phrase it's fun to it's fun to play but it's bad to own <laughs> right yeah that's right. i think i think that i think that sums up the the totality of overwatch 2 i think yeah, yeah. I, and I, that's that's the way that i felt about it all this time and it's sad to think that because like it, it because I, I keep coming back to it like like i had overwatch one i paid for overwatch one i paid for overwatch one twice it's like the fact that i look at something that is essentially the same game but free to play and i go this is lesser value than what i had what i paid for is a bad thing i would imagine it's like i now have this thing for free but it is the same thing i had before that i paid for and now i can do less in it but hey yeah <laughs> the, 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 the poor any developers man over at blizzard they gotta eat Man, <laughs> them dudes are full. <laughs> them corporate, them corporate cats are fat. Them boys are full. I mean, yeah. This, in terms of how I feel, man, I think he summed it up perfect. It's I it's a I... fun game to play, but like, even because I didn't buy the battle pass, but like. Even if I did, like I wouldn't see anything in there worth having. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> and that oh man, like I did want to touch on what we did, like what we did see yesterday, um, because it, beyond how like outraged it actually made me, like it's 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 still weird that that feels like it's it's a justification that one has to make, where it's like like in no way shape or form is this a good thing in no way shape or form is this something like a a, a, and like a decision that you can justify a company making um in this specific instance absolutely not like you might look at fortnite and you might go oh you know that, that that game absolutely isn't worth the value but at the very least what you can say is that you couldn't get that experience anywhere else and the game itself inherently was free to play but you cannot say that for overwatch which makes it so much like more unbelievable whereas like i know exactly how much this costs i know exactly how much value this has you charged me for it it's like i know how much i spent on it and now you're saying that <laughs> like now now you're saying that what I paid for was inherently worthless. Like what I'm getting now out of this is inherently worthless. And the what the value that I put into it, the money that I put into it, amounts to nothing. And it's like it's like there, there is there is no way, shape, or form at all with, uh, that the decision Blizzard made, the decision Activision made, whoever made this decision to make this go free to play and make this the way that it is. Like there is no way, shape, or form at all that this is a good decision. 